Before that, though, an influential group of MPs has said they're worried about the uncertainty of the future for farmers. The Welsh Affairs Committee has been reviewing the Australia trade deal, which will see tariff-free meat imports. Now, the Lewis family, who run a dairy farm near Caerphilly, say they've had to diversify due to worries that tariff-free meat imports from Australia will push them out of the market. Well, Charampreet Carer is there for us now. Charampreet. That's right, Jonathan. Well, the whole point of that affair committee's work was to find out what impact the trade deal would have on a place like this, Tog Farm in Caerphilly. But if we spin the camera around a second, you might actually wonder if I've come to the right place. With the kids playing and the barbecue on, this looks more like a holiday spot than a traditional farm. But actually, Tog Farm's been around for hundreds of years, and all of this is relatively new. So, what's changed? Could this be the future of Welsh farming? Livestock's been swapped for luxury glamping. Instead of bangers, this farm now deals only in rare breeds and the dairy's been replaced with date night. To have, you know, a 70-acre farm and to make it commercially viable um, and sustainable for a family of five is near impossible now. You've got the hot tub, which is a wood-fired hot tub, the igloo where you could have a three-course meal and then our bell tents quite a romantic getaway and it seems to be so popular with everybody from Wolverhampton to Swansea to you know just down the road. Now this little guy is a valet black-nosed sheep. There are only four of them here at Tog Farm but Bridget tells me that's just about as profitable as having more than a hundred Welsh mountain sheep. Why? These little guys cost around £5,000 whereas those mountain sheep just a hundred. I've been in farming all my life, since I was a, a toddler. Well, the value of sheep has stayed the same. I think you can go back <clears throat> sort of 25 years and land prices aren't any different now to what they were then. But everything else has gone up, commodities and everything else have uh, gone up a huge amount. And that means it's just not profitable anymore? No, that's right. No, it's not. No, no, not unless you can do it on a large scale. And how does it feel for you, having worked in farming for all of these years, to see everything changing? It's, uh, it's, it's difficult in some ways, yeah. The adaptation was driven by Bridget, who gave up her life in London as a sales director for Victoria's Secret to help Tog Farm live on, even if that means changing with the times. I think one of the biggest con contributing factors is people's thoughts now on meat. I think there's a lot of vegans, vegetarians. Actually, you can make a living from... People just want to come and see the animals now. People want to come you know, see the cows, see the pigs, all the different animals that we have, and it doesn't actually mean sending any animals to slaughter. The evolution of Welsh farming looks set to continue, accelerated by Brexit, the pandemic, and the agreement last month of a UK-Australia trade deal, which will allow Australian beef and lamb to enter the UK market tariff-free. This way is the legislation that we have to follow in the UK is completely different to what there is, if there is any, in Australia. It's extremely difficult and I think everybody in farming at the moment is, is finding it hard and everybody seems to be diversifying. Surviving a market rocked by a turbulent few years has been hard enough. And while Tog Farm has found ways to adapt, for traditional farming in Wales, this uncertainty looks set to continue. Now that uncertainty comes from the fears Bridget spoke of, that Welsh meat could be undercut by imports from Australia. This committee says that's actually unlikely in the short term, because Australia's main meat market is actually in Asia. What's up in the air though is the long term, as the Commission's chair told me. We're concerned that longer term there could be a risk for Welsh farmers if uh, Australia suddenly starts wanting to get more of its meat into UK markets. That's where the competitive uh, uh, challenge will, will come from. What the committee want to see then is more consultation with Welsh farmers like Bridget. They want the nitty gritty details of this trade deal to include their views. Now in response to that, the UK government says they will continue to work with farmers and the Welsh government to help Welsh farmers take advantage of the dynamic market opened up by the trade deals they're negotiating. And I'm sure that farmers up and down the country like Bridget will be watching those dynamic markets to see how they'll be impacted.